If you are an engineering student and you are unsure about the topic you've chosen for your final year project with questions like has it sufficient depth and breadth? Will it be too much to take on? Or how will I go about this with all the current restrictions as a result of the pandemic? Then in this video, I will show you a three-step recipe that will make any engineering project stand out. Hello everyone, my name is Adrian, I'm a mechanical engineer and I make videos covering a wide range of engineering topics. If you find this video useful or just plain entertaining, do give this video a thumbs up. So let's jump right into it. The task of choosing a topic for your final year project can be daunting. This is the first time where you will be producing a report of this scale on your own and choosing the right topic is crucial. So then how do you determine a good topic for your project. Then more uncertainties are created with the onset of the pandemic. Now, on top of choosing the correct topic for your project, how do you ensure your project's not impacted by the ever-changing constraints as a result of the pandemic? So in this video, I will run through a three-step recipe that will ensure that your project stands out and you get that well-deserved marks. At the end of the video, I will also show you a student project that followed this recipe with great success. Now, the recipe to follow is design, validate and optimize. Now, before I start discussing the steps, one thing that you need to think about is choosing a simulation only final year project. Now, why do I say this? With a simulation only final year project, you are not restricted to the accessibility of workshops or technician hours, which both can be impacted by the current pandemic. Restrictions on workshop opening times and a reduced technician hours can make your life really difficult if you want to build anything or test your designs to check for different outputs. With simulation only final year projects, you only need your computer with the relevant software installed on it and you can easily get support through email or video conferencing from the software experts at the university. So for this video, we are only going to look at simulation only final year projects. All right, now let's discuss each step. Most topics chosen in engineering final year projects are about designing something that will solve a problem. That can include weight reduction of the suspension on your team's budget car, a wind turbine for the use in an urban area, improved aerodynamics for a reduction in fuel consumption and a heat pump for residential use. The list of possibilities are endless. The important part here is to, to select something that is within your abilities and to ensure that the university has the facilities to support you. Now let's take the suspension example that I mentioned before. For projects that include experimental work, will it be possible to manufacture the suspension with the available facilities that the university provide? Does the university have testing equipment that can be used to measure, for example, deflection or localized stresses in the suspension arm? Then, if you need to do some finite element analysis, are you comfortable with the software available or are you confident that you'll be able to quickly learn to use the software to complete your project? And finally, does the university have expert support on the software when you get stuck and need some help? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself before you start, as not thinking about them can cause a lot of problems down the road. In the past, the easiest way to validate your design was to build and test it. Most universities have workshops where you can build your design and put it through a bunch of tests measuring outputs, which you can then compare with the outputs of your design. Now with the pandemic, this is not always possible anymore. Workshops and testing facilities might be unavailable and technicians are working at reduced hours, which can make it difficult to get anything made and tested. So how do you go about validating your design without doing any physical experimentation? The answer to that question is to use other people's experimental results. You can find a lot of peer-reviewed journal articles that report experimental results. So all you need to do is hop on Google Scholar and search for journal articles that have sufficient experimental data that you can use. You just need to make sure that they provide enough information that you can successfully replicate their study. When you are able to replicate their study and you get the same results or very close to the results that the authors report in the journal article, then you can confidently say you have set up your simulation correctly. 
Let's apply this to the example where you want to improve the aerodynamics of a car. First, you find a study giving you enough information that you can replicate the car body and using CFD, you can calculate the coefficient of drag, the coefficient of lift and any other outputs that this study reports on. The more results to compare, the better. After running your CFD simulation, you compare the results of your simulation with the results given in the journal article. When they are comparable, with a small enough margin of error, you can say that your simulation has been set up correctly. You have now created a validated tool. Congratulations! But this is not the end. The question now is, what are you going to do with this tool? You are going to improve your design. This is a crucial part of your project, as it will show you have the ability to increase efficiency of a design, to reduce the cost of manufacturing, or to increase performance. You can look at reducing the weight of a part while still maintaining the minimum strength it requires to work properly. You can improve the engine's combustion in order to reduce harmful emissions. Or you can use a novel technology that will further reduce aerodynamic drag for better performance and reduced fuel consumption. All right, thanks for sticking to the end. Now let's look at an actual student project that used this recipe with great success. Step one, design. The goal was to design a shell eco-marathon car body that has reduced drag and thus will be able to travel further and do better in the challenge. Step two, validate. In order to ensure the CFD simulation was accurate, an existing shell eco-marathon car was replicated from a team that shared their report on the internet and their car body CAD part on GrabCAD. The results obtained were very close with the results given in the report. The CFD simulation was thus validated. Step three, improve. The car body was improved by using shark denticles, which resulted in reduced drag and a decrease in fuel consumption. If you are thinking about a topic for your project, but you are unsure if it's feasible, join the Discord server and let me know what your project idea is and we can have a look on how we can make it comply with the three steps. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.